What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Uh, today I'm going to start a video series on uh, do-it-yourself at home web hosting uh, or server hosting um, and the pros and cons whether you should get into it whether it's worth you doing or not. Um, there's several um, four actually considerations uh, that I've come up with um, that you need to think about before you think about doing uh, hosting a game server or a web server or mail server or whatever at home. It's actually not that hard to do. That's not the consideration here. Uh, anyone that has kind of a can-do attitude that's that's pretty intelligent could figure it out. The main concerns um, and, and taking a step back, I have 12 years of, of IT experience. I've also been doing these kind of things as a hobby for for many years. And so, um, and I also, let me show you, I also do this on the side and make money. I've got a, a server rack here. Um, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert. There's probably a lot of people out there that are smarter than me um, that do this kind of stuff. But I know enough to, to kind of walk you through the pros and cons of this. Okay, the first consideration is obviously going to be cost. Um, there's a few different cost considerations. Number one is do you have the hardware to pull this off? Um, to make it cost effective, you're really not going to want to go out and buy hardware. Um, you really want to take kind of an old desktop computer like this, or uh, maybe you've got a, an old home theater PC, um, or you know, kind of a bare bones uh, server setup like I have in there. But uh, you really don't want to be spending a whole lot of money on the hardware or this isn't going to be profitable for you. Well, or cost effective I should say. It's not going to be profitable no matter what you do. Um, the second uh, consideration is going to be electricity. Um, I have, in here I have three servers, four servers, um, a firewall, switch, Two battery backups, a NAS, router, and so forth. Um, and I've measured it and it pulls about 300 something watts on a consistent basis. Now just you run in one, one uh, server, especially a desktop model, you'll be higher consumption than that because these are pretty low power consumption servers. So let's say you're at 150 watts if you multiply that times 24 hours in a day and then divide it by a thousand that equals 3.6 kilowatt hours per day of electricity consumption and depending on where you live in the country that could be anywhere from about 60 cents to a dollar a day just in electricity costs. Okay, The last cost um, consideration is going to be um, your um, how you're going to do the DNS now you can, like I'm doing, you can get a static IP address with your with your ISP, which that's going to be a cost per month usually. Uh, I'm paying about five dollars per month per IP address. Now that's that's kind of on the expensive side. Unfortunately, I don't have much of an option where I live, but uh, you can talk to your ISP and see what it costs, what it would cost to get a static IP address. If you don't have that option, you can also sign up for a dynamic uh, DNS service out there. I don't know exactly what they cost. I think they cost uh, about 10 or 15 bucks a month for a dynamic IP address. And basically what that does is it, it automatically um, reroutes um, the DNS traffic to your home uh, dynamic IP address on your, such your cable modem or your DSL modem or, or whatever. Okay, in this office, um, it's not the smallest room, but it's not the hugest room. And this is my work PC. This is our family PC. It's on very, very infrequently. In fact, it's off right now. But the, the consideration I want you to think about is if you've got a PC running 24 7 around the clock, you're going to have heat issues, um, especially if you've got multiples. Like I have my workstation, which is pretty beefy, and then I've got three servers and other equipment in there. And so this room gets about four or five degrees hotter than the rest of the house. Now, it doesn't bother me a, a whole lot, but it, it's definitely not something for everyone. 
The final consideration is going to be security. Now I have a business class firewall here, um, but most of you aren't going to have something like that. Most of you are going to have, this is a Verizon Fios router, uh, most of you are going to have something like this, uh, just a home uh, gateway router type thing. And uh, that's not going to be very secure, it's not going to allow you a lot of protection for your servers. And so the problem with that is you're going to want to make sure you don't have anything on the server that you care about getting hacked or, you know, a denial of service attack causing problems or, or anything like that. And, and obviously, you know, if you have some sort of production need for this where you can't afford any downtime, this is hosting it at home is probably the wrong solution for you. Okay, the last consideration I want you to think about is time. Uh, just because you can do it uh, doesn't mean that um, you're going to be effective and efficient at doing it. Um, I used to work at a web hosting company. I'm very fluent in DNS and configuring web servers and so forth, so I do it. Um, and it's not a big deal. I spend maybe three or four hours a year administering the servers, and uh, it's profitable for me to do that. Uh, cost effective, I, I should say. Um, and I actually make money uh, hosting other people's um, sites for them. However, if you haven't done this before um, and you don't have a lot of free time, this maybe isn't something that you should consider, especially if you can get something for 10 or $15 a month out there as far as a web server or a game server. You probably should do that. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of money. Um, again, if you don't have the hardware, if you don't have the, the electricity cost and you don't want to deal with the heat, um, these are all things that you need to consider. Anyways, thanks for watching. Next time I'll take you a little bit more in depth into some, some more advanced things, but this was kind of the basics, the first things that you should be thinking about before you get into this. Thanks for watching.